we face. Uh, Mr. President, Republican leader Mitch McConnell this morning once again reiterated that the Republican Party will not vote to lift the debt ceiling and in an extraordinarily irresponsible manner, Republicans have indicated that they will not pay the debts incurred under the Trump administration. In his statement, as he has done time and time again, Senator, Senator McConnell implies that this debt ceiling has something to do with future spending. It does not. Like anyone who owns a credit card, the payments that are made are for past spending. In this case, spending incurred under the Trump administration. And let us be clear. If the United States, the largest economy in the world, defaults on its debt, it will plunge not only our country, but the entire global economy into what could become a severe economic depression. That means massive unemployment, higher interest rates, severe reduction in government services, and possible cuts in such programs as Social Security and Medicare. The irresponsibility of the Republican leadership is not just something that I worry about. According to press reports, former Republican Secretaries of State, or Secretaries of Treasury, Hank Paulson, who worked under George W. Bush, and Steven Mnuchin, who worked under Donald Trump, Republican Secretaries of the Treasury, both of them visited with Senator McConnell to make the case about the need to extend the debt ceiling. They understand, as I think all of us do, how important it is that the United States of America does not default on its debt, and it is about time that my Republican colleagues listened to them. Now, let me say a word about the $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill. There has been a lot of talk lately about the need to compromise. Well, let me be clear. To a very significant degree, that has already taken place. Of the 11 Democratic members of the Senate Budget Committee, nine understood the need for a $6 trillion bill, which would finally address the unmet needs the long ignored needs of the working families of our country, as well as begin the process of tackling the existential threat of climate change. My guess is that at least 40 out of the 50 members of the Democratic caucus supported the $6 trillion proposal. We compromised big time. We cut that proposal, or agreed to cut that proposal, almost in half, down to $3.5 trillion. That, Mr. President, to my mind, is a major, major compromise. And as we go forward in this debate, let me be as clear as I can be as to why every penny of that $3.5 trillion is absolutely needed. And let me also make clear that this bill, despite some of the rhetoric coming from my Republican colleagues, will not add, should not add, and will not add one nickel to the deficit. It will be paid for. It will be paid for by finally demanding that some of the wealthiest people in this country who in any given year, we're talking about multi-billionaires who in a given year do not pay a nickel in federal income tax, or dozens of large profitable corporations 
that in a given year do not pay a nickel in federal income tax. Well, we are going to demand that these people stop paying their fair share of taxes. And that is more than enough money to cover the three and a half trillion dollars that is in this proposal. So anyone who suggests to you that this bill is not going to be paid for, that it is going to add to the deficit, is simply not telling the truth. It should and will be fully paid for. 